Hey guys, it's Christine Bertram, and I am coming to you live for The Hive on a Friday night. Woohoo! So, <laughs> we're back at it. If you guys missed it, I was live maybe an hour ago, and I was showing off some swap cards and happy mail I got, along with the DSP sampler, the product share, and the in-color club. So, in case you guys missed that, you should go back and check out that video. Um, <laughs> so, we're doing the Waves class tonight, though. And there are three cards that we're going to make um, momentarily. As soon as I get, <laughs> get the Facebook feed up here so I can check my comments. Make sure I have it all rocking and rolling correctly. So I'm three minutes tardy because I did realize I forgot to put Cindy Runtree and some of the other prize package winners from last night in the post of, <laughs> of the winners. And it wouldn't let me update it. So I think I might have to delete the post and then um, go back <laughs> and redo it. Hi, Carla Lake. So, oh man, that's always how it goes. So something just changed. Hi, Barb Johnson. Hi, Linda Bailey from Iowa. Something just changed with the way that my um, Cards Pray Christine Facebook page portrays on my screen and <laughs> looks different. So <clears throat> let's see posts about photos, mentions, where are the videos, <laughs> man, okay, um, this must be it, hello again, Carmen said hello again, yep, perfect, hi Sharon, hi Barbara Gabby, hi Joan Gordon, hi Patricia Pascopio, so, okay, I found it, I was wearing the same shirt, so I wanted to make sure I was in the right video, <laughs> hi Deb Norman, hi Pamela Olson, Hi, Sandy Wicklander. All right, you guys. So we're going to do the Waves of Inspiration class now. Um, it's going to be three cards. And I will be honest with you. I've made one of them, but not the other two. So we're going to fly by the seat of our pants on the other one. Um, hi, Judy Bobo from Snowy UP. Hi, Melanie Foy. I was just on. You are correct. It's going to be a long night. <laughs> hi, Catherine. Actually, no. These three cards are going to be fast, I think. We're going to not rush through them, but... It's three cards where last night we had four cards plus game night. But I do have a special treat. For those people that are in my VIP group, I am doing a special live right after this. So it might be a long night for me. Um, I have my card buffet tomorrow. And I actually had somebody else just um, had to cancel because they're in the hospital. Hi, Karen Forward. Uh, so if anybody's local to me and wanting to make, hi, Judy Kruger, wanting to make, I have six cards. So the card buffet tomorrow is from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., making six cards. I had somebody back out today that's in the hospital and um, is giving up their cards. And so I would take somebody who's interested in um, attending the card buffet tomorrow. So thanks for sharing, Joan. I appreciate it. Um, have you had a beer? I hope you have a beer already. Yes. So I got, hi, Karen Carstay. So Tyler and I went to Dubuque last weekend and we stopped at a liquor store called Vans on the way back in Dubuque. And, um, well, it's not Dubuque because we were on the Wisconsin side. So I don't know what the city was on the Wisconsin side. I didn't pay attention to it, but we found a beer that we've had before and we haven't had it since from Big Money called a Blueberry Blonde. So it's like a blueberry blue, blueberry blonde beer. So yes, that one's going to be calling my name. <laughs> So, um, yeah. Hi, Penny Powell from Florida. Okay, so I kind of went off on a little tra track there, <laughs> off track, but <laughs> we were talking about the three cards tonight, um, and uh, I've done one and not the other two, so we're going to work on them together based off of the sample that I have here in front of me. The reason that is is because East Dubuque, Illinois. Oh, yes, Deb. I thought I was going to say Dubuque, but I didn't think Dubuque was in Wisconsin, and you're right. We went to Illinois, so we hit... Iowa, Illinois, and Wisconsin all in one weekend. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. So that was good. Hi, Deanna Stell. Um, thanks for sharing, Judy. So we're going to, and I got happy mail, you guys. When I went in, in this little break that I had, hi, Bonnie Kelly, between the last live I did and this one, I went and got the mail. And you guys, I have five more cards to share with you. And Penny Powell, oh, <laughs> glitter. <laughs> you guys are going to see what I mean. Oh man, I can't like um, tilt the card sideways or it will all fall out. <laughs> Tyler would cut his leg off if he got it on him. <laughs> so I won't show him the glitter. Oh man. So you guys, um, so side notes, we are doing the waves class tonight. Hi Latokia. Hi Linda Bailey. Yep, Dubuque, Iowa. And then I was on East Dubuque, Illinois was where the liquor store was. So yes, There'll be a beer ready, Judy. 
<laughs> All right, so we are the on the border of the. Th yes, you sure are. <laughs> Betty, yes, you got me. I'll just, you guys will all see what I'm talking about in a second. So I think I have everything ready. Um, I do want to note that I have one set left for this class tonight. Just one. <laughs> um, the first person I tell them that they have it is the, hopefully the first person I see. And then I will be done. Hi, Mary Schaumberger. Uh, I originally was going to make 24. And in talking with Anna... And a couple of gals, Judy in class, we, they all said like, no, you should make more. So I ended up making 32. Well, you guys, I ended up making eight more on top of having 32 made already. So when the last person gets the card kit, so Millie Kindle, you got the second last one. Hi, Vicki from Delaware. Uh, so Millie Kindle placed an order today and she's like, do you still have any of the waves left? I'm like, yes, I have two. Well, now I have one. So whoever wants it, it's, it's going to have to tell it to me in the comments. Do not email me. Do not text me. <laughs> you have to write it in the comments. <laughs> and I have to acknowledge that you got it. Hi, Jean Maxwell again. <laughs> um, so one left of the waves, but we're going to do roll call really quick because you guys, we have 39 people already signed up. So if I ever make it down your way, I'll need to bring some. <laughs> yes, beer is always welcome here. <laughs> that rhyme too. All right, Ann Bellinger, you were the first person to sign up for this class. And then Mary Carls, Mary Lemke, Karen Wettstein, Barb Johnson, Barb Barco, Carissa Alberts, Kathy King, Susie Stocks, Barbara Moynan, Joyce Koronek, Barbara Godby. So you guys just, did you catch that? That's four barbs in the first 12 people. <laughs> Lynn Beasley, Mo Stites. Uh, let's see here. Then we're going to go to Deanna Stell, Feline Mays, Fancy Nancy Billets, Carla Real, Latokia Trigg, Becky Gandolfo, Doris Munson, Sue Somerville, Naomi Worrell, Cheryl Bowie, Deb Norman, Carla Lake, Dee Serena, Marsha Dean times two, uh, Lila Erickson, and then we work up this way. Jeannie Parker, Melanie Howe, Deb Ryan, Faye Godby, Karen Forward, Anna Schaffer, uh, or Schaefer, uh, Sandy Wicklander, Christina Bernards, and then Millie Kindle. Woohoo! And my little exclamation mark is going up there, so I'm going to get rid of that. So <clears throat> that would be 39 people, and a bunch of you are already rocking and rolling and ready to go. Hi, Naughty Nancy. Um, so you guys, the PDF tutorial for this was emailed out, I believe on whatever day my mom was here, Wednesday. Um, yes. So it was Wednesday and, um, I believe everybody, but Millie has it at this point. So, um, Millie, I will be sending yours to you as soon as I have a moment to <laughs> get, get to it. So, um, thank you everybody for registering for this class in, this was an add on class. I did not have this on the original calendar or docket. I kind of twisted Diane Bogenhagen's arm about two months ago when they came out with this new product that was going to become available in the annual catalog, the bundle. Uh, I said, Diane, I don't have room in my schedule to do more stuff, but uh, maybe you'd want to do a class. And she had bought in two of everything, include, and then the bundle, so one bundle and then two of all the consumables. I said, a way for you to help use up some of your product is why don't you have a class? So she had a class, and I think she had seven or eight people at her class. And then in the interim, you guys saw the cards, loved the cards, wanted a class. And I'm like, I can't say no. So we added on a class. <laughs> and it, when I have a, to add on and sneak in a class, it always ends up being on a Friday at 5.30. <laughs> so, um, so that's how I end up with some Friday I ad hoc classes. Uh, so we're going to be doing these three cards. Before I do that, though, I do want to share with you the happy, more happy mail that I got from a few people today. <laughs> Gotta be careful not to... Um, uh, dump all of the stuff out. <laughs> yes, you get to craft a long feline. Yay. Okay. So I got this from my upline, Kelly Atchison. She says, rock star, you are amazing. Congratulations on top 10 for March sales. And you are beyond incredible. And this is the card. Yay. She didn't write in it. Yay. I, I, I like it when you guys write in cards and I like it when you don't. But Kelly usually writes in them. But this time she put um, a card on it. So that are like a little postcard. So now I can reuse this. So perfect. So that one's from Kelly Atchison. This one came from Melody Miller. Um, and she sent this awesome... Uh, like triangle fold card. This would be a good one for fun folds. I've done this for a fun fold in the past, but it's like a little pocket card. And she's got the ribbon wrapped around, meeting in the middle here, tying a little bow. And this is from the hand pen suite. So it's a little pocket card. I love my pocket cards here. So that's Melody Miller. This one, let's put that right there. This one is from, it says here, 
um, just a card to say you're amazing. And this is from Penny Powell. <laughs> Keeping this one flat. Very pretty. So artistically inked die cut out of gold foil and adding some blending color in the, um, like a coral blackberry and a kind of yellowish cr crushed curry color. Blackberry bliss. But you guys, when you open this up, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm afraid to even move anything. It's all full of glitter, <laughs> glitter pieces. Oh, so yes, and <laughs> they're all over it. So it made me smile. Oh man, it made me smile, Penny. So I got your check, by the way, too. <laughs> all right, hi, Christina Domino. All right, and this one came from Carol Engelbrecht. Yes, and um, this one, she also, Carol, so if you're watching, I did get car cold hard cash in here for class i love it so you guys it is safe to send mail um cash in the mail sometimes this says happy birthday on the back here look at this and then on the front uh she covered it up and put thanks <laughs> so uh just um this twine here is from i think the pet suite product where it was a red and the black and white baker's twine so so that was the happy mail i got when i went in to the house so i'm gonna set this safely over on the side here <laughs> so all right so <clears throat> Uh, I think we're going to get started, you guys. I already did roll call. We're going to get right into it because <laughs> I feel like I've given you lots of updates and we were together last night. So we're just going to rock and roll right into class here. Um, just know that if you're catching the replay of this later on and you have specific questions or you need anything, just know that I don't always catch the comments from the posts when you do it during the replay. When you comment during the live, I generally see it either up there or down here and I try to answer you right away. Um, but if you need something and it's important, please reach out to me um, via text or email or Facebook message. Um, and just a reminder, this was a class you could get free with an order. So if anybody does wanna place an order tonight with my host code, use it um, for the minimum amount. Uh, you could get the last set of card kits that I have for free as a free gift. So um, that's always an option. Or if you wanna get one of my future classes, you can get pick April or May at this point for uh, placing out order with a minimum amount using the host code. So, all right, we're gonna flip down and we're gonna get our bearings straight and show you the three cards. Ah, yes, Mary Lemke, you're finally here, yay. We're just getting started. Okay, so this was the card that I designed with Diane. So I got this one, no problem. And then this one's from Be So Bad. Um, <laughs> it's a fun fold. It's going to be fun. This one is the one that got me. It just was like, oh my gosh, it just speaks to you. So it's awesome. Um, she kind of explained to me what to do for putting these together and making them. So <laughs> we're going to just start with the one that I know what to do with. And then we're going to work our way into the other ones. How does that sound? So this is a Hi Mary Carls. This is the bundle that you can get. Um, it is carrying over to the new annual catalog. So it's called Waves of Inspiration. And there's a set of dies and there's the stamp set. I am missing one die. Anna has it because she's doing some die cutting for me. Um, it came with, um, there, so there was a collection and these gems are gone already. And you guys can see I used the majority on your kits except for, I didn't use the greeny ones. I don't know if you guys can even see the colors there very much, but these were the greeny ones. So there was an assortment of different blue ones and the um, everybody's kits got a little combination. So be very careful pulling out your pieces because you would have some loose gems, like three loose ones versus them all together because there were two of one color, two of another color, two of another color. And I had to mix and match to make sure everybody got like a good assortment that went with each card. Uh, so the gems are in there. Um, the foil paper is gone already from what I understand. So you can't get this uh, foil. I know, and I'm sad too. This blue foil, silver, it came with silver, this blue color, and then this blue color. So like Coastal Cabana and Night of Navy, that's gone. I believe the designer series paper is still available for purchase. So, um, so those are all the things that came in the collection. And we're going to start, we need that. We need these for another card. So, all right, let's, I got all my stamps all out and we're going to set this here and get our first card kit ready to go. So we're going to start with our, our pelican here, just hanging out, watching the sun set and grab our kits. <coughs> all right. So we have Pacific Point is your card base and it's eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. 
just burnish your edge. I never burnish your edges of your cards when you guys get kits for me. I always just fold them. So you always want to burnish them. If you're ever curious like what you get in a card kit from me, you guys get all the die cutting. You get the embellishments. You get the ribbons. You get everything except for adhesive to put your cards together um, and the inks and the stamps that you need to stamp that because that's against compliance. But you get all the pieces. Everything's die cut. I don't hold back on the die cutting because I have a fabulous assistant, um, Anna. She has been doing die cutting. Karen will sometimes do it, but Anna does probably 98% of the die cutting. So you guys, a round out uh, shout of uh, you know, applause to Anna. She cut all these little pieces for you. So you should have two pieces of white in your kit here. They're both the same size. One is a plain for your inside and one's embossed with the painted texture embossing folder, which is carrying over. So one's outside and then the inside. And then you have this piece like this, and that is for you to stamp your pelican on. All right, so we'll need that. You also have the stitch rectangle. Stitch rectangles are carrying over. They're stitching just, I don't know what you can see. There's a little stitching around the whole edge here. And so that's what we're gonna need for coloring our sunset. You have this little guy. So that's the other die. I love these two dies. We used this last night uh, on the Daisy Lane. We used this one and the big one. And so that one we'll need to stamp. And then you guys should have two Mother of the Pearl Clouds. And they have this shimmery shininess to them. That's super cool. Uh, there you can kind of get it. You'll have a piece of designer paper. Now everybody's is gonna look slightly different because it's a 12 by 12 and there's just this swirly pattern on it. And so you're like, you can see here, my sample is gonna look even different than this. So that's gonna be for your bottom on the outside. And those are all the pieces that you guys should have in your kit. So let's start with stamping first. And I have, so I did do Night of Navy for my happy birthday because there's some dark navy color in here. <laughs> Not everybody got a piece that has dark navy. So you might consider using Pacific Point for your sentiment, which I think I'm gonna do for this card. Uh, so happy birthday, I've already got it on a block. And you guys know my drill. I grab out my scrap paper and I like to practice to see if it stamps straight. When I go onto my label, I will sometimes stamp the back first uh, to see how it, I can get it to go. Um, if I do it bad, I still have a second side. If I do it good, then at least I know I've done it good on one side. The thing is when you die cut out images, they have a rolled edge and a, like a scruffier edge. And I like to have, hi Kathy Jackson from Iola, Wisconsin. I like to have the rolled edge to the top. So what I did is I practiced on the back side and I knew I went too far to the left. And so on this side, I came back to the right. So I got that straightened out. All right, so our inside has him. Okay, so we're gonna grab crumb cake, the cake of the crumb, the crumb of the cake. Um, the peanut butter bread from last week that we made, our peanut butter bread from the Great Depression that we made last weekend is <laughs> did not get eaten. Um, there's like a chunk left like this, you guys, and it's harder than a rock. <laughs> and I'm like, Tyler, I get it. Like, it's like they didn't have a lot of um, like milk and eggs and dairy and sour cream to add to um, recipes back during the Great Depression. But we can add milk and yogurts and stuff like that. So I'm like, the next time we make this recipe from the Great Depression, we are going to add some extra moisturizer, not moisturizer, moistery um, ingredients. <laughs> so, oh, it was dry. <laughs> All right. So there's our dude. Um, he's going there. And then you guys have your piece here that is the for your pelican. And you can stamp that. No, if you don't have the pelican, you guys, you could forgive, or I should say forget about using it. It would look really pretty not having it on. You know, it would just be this outdoorsy, pretty sun study card if you don't have the set. Don't fret if you don't have it. Uh, if you have something else that could work in replacement of it, you have this piece of paper that you can use. Uh, so that is where you're going to stamp your little pelican. And... 
His little nose is colored in. So if you have some sort of an orange pumpkin pie um, stamp and write marker, or if you have a blend, whatever you want to use. But I did, if you have a, a blend too, like um, not the blend, like the stamp and blends, but if you have the, um, that blend marker with the solution that you could dip it in your ink pad and still colored in. So there's that. Now, through the magic of TV, I found that I had one in the back of my dies. I don't know how or what, but I'm like, ooh, there you go. I've got one already die cut. So I'm going to just take this and color in this dude's nose as well, I guess. And you guys, whoops, I went over the lines. It's okay. Um, in this die set, this is the one that you would use to get your die cut out with your cutting emboss machine. All right, so by the magic... Blender pen! Deirdre, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> so confusion, they both say blend. Um, so yes, you could use your blender pen and dip into, you know, like the cover of your pumpkin pie ink and then color in his nose if you didn't have an orange marker. So, okay, by the magic of TV, we have this done already. And um, so we're setting this off to the side. Okay. You guys, I just remembered that I did do a Tip Tuesday on this card as well. So in case you missed that Tip Tuesday, now you get it live in the flesh here with me now. All right, so our sunset, you guys, consists of these three colors. It's the Daffodil Delight, the Pie of the Pumpkin, and a Calypso Coral. And we start with the, the Daffodil Delight, and then we go to Pumpkin, and then we go to Coral. So... My sound isn't working, but I can still see. Yeah, aren't the captions awesome that you have the captions that you can use? Okay, so let's make sure I have sound. I think I should. Oh, yeah, I got the sound. Okay, so that means I'm good. If I have it, then most people should have it. <laughs> All right, so I'm using blending brushes. So I have three different brushes. I like to pull in for the different colors. Some people would use the same brush for all of them. I generally go off the edge of the paper to start to get some of the densest part of the color off. And then I work my way on to the rectangle. You guys see I have a little scratch paper underneath so I don't get ink all over my counter. And with blending, you always start off lightly and you can always add more color. Uh, the more color you add, the darker it's gonna get. And if you feel like you don't have enough color, you can go back and add it. If you feel like you have too much, then you might wanna flip it over and start over. But I'm gonna start with about that much for the Daffodil Delight, okay? So well, let's go right about there, about that dark. I might not be done with it, so I'm gonna leave it open for the moment and go to my pumpkin pie and grab my new brush. And I feel like chicken tonight. No, I feel like I need a bigger piece of paper. I thought maybe I'll get by on that little little guy, but not really. Okay, so we're gonna go to our pumpkin pie. Do you see what happens there? That would go straight to this if you did that right on here. So I always start off the edge and then I work my way on to the paper. I mean, you'd kind of waste a little ink when you do that, but it, in the long run, it's gonna make your project look a lot better. And so what I'm doing now is putting pumpkin pie over the center area. And you do kind of want to bring it into the yellow, but you don't want to cover up the yellow. So I'm kind of lightly adding a little to it to help blend it along. And I'm coming back to the top area. And this is another one where maybe you might be happy with it looking like that, but you can kind of see there's a distinct line there. So that's where you could come back with a little of the yellow and bring some yellow in. And the yellow will help fade that line. I wouldn't do it with the pumpkin because you don't want pumpkin going into the yellow. So it helped it a little bit. <clears throat> it's still a little more sharp than I like it, but we're gonna worry about that in a second. So then we're gonna bring in some coral, flipping this around, So because I like to come at it at this way. I'm a right-handed person. So um, it's easier for me to have the color I need to air, the, paper I need to color on the right hand side. Okay, so we're bringing in coral and I'm making sure I'm hitting that top area, but I'm also coming into the pumpkin pie area and we're just gonna keep adding. So right now I would say, ah, it's too light, right? You can tell it's a little bit not dark enough. So I'm gonna keep coming into it until I get it where it's about the same 
darkness as the pumpkin pie. And as I get that darker, I am gonna pull it down into the pumpkin pie. That helps with the blending. You know, so this is gonna be a really distinct sunset. If you don't like the sunset so dark, you can always add, a. Um, you could have always just not used as much ink. So I'm getting there, but I feel like there's, like the top is blended really nice. Like there's a nice tra smooth transition, but then it's like, boom, yellow, no, not good. So <laughs> in my head, I'm thinking, I gotta get a little bit more of the pumpkin pulled down into the yellow, but I'm gonna be very careful on how I do that. Um, suggestion, if you don't have coral, flirty flamingo. Uh, flirty flamingo, if you have real red, but you have to be very careful. If you go with anything darker than this, you gotta be very, very light with your colors because it's going to look really contrasty, right? So blushing bride will be too light. So flirty flamingo, poppy parade, maybe Latokia poppy parade if you have it, or real red. So what I'm trying to do is pull in a little more of that pumpkin into my yellow, but not so much that it's gonna change it and not look yellow. Okay, so I'm getting there. I feel like there's still a little bit there that I wanna have a smoother transition. So just adding a little bit more pumpkin to that. And I think I'm pretty good with that sunset. You guys like it? <laughs> Would you be happy with that sunset? I think I just froze. Uh, I literally just froze. Okay, and it still is doing a freezing thing. Okay, so this has not happened for a very long time. So let's see, and it's back. Okay, cool. I have no idea, I did not do anything. I literally, I think I moved too fast and it did not like me. So, okay, so you guys like the sunset. I'm gonna leave it there for now. All right, so we're gonna close up. What is the third color? Um, Calypso Coral, and we had Pumpkin Pie. Hi, Laura Wagon, and we had the Daffodil of My Delight. All right, so I'm gonna move these out of the way and move this out of the way so I don't get inky dinky do all over. All right, so I think that we can do a little assembly action now. So if I recall correctly during Tip Tuesday, I did not glue that down right away. So what we can do is prep these both with some liquid glue. Hi, Kathy Penner. Thanks for joining us tonight. So we're just gonna glue these two pieces down first. All right, so take a look at your designer paper and, and see what makes sense. Like, does it look better that way or that way? Okay, that's up to you. Um, I know that my sunset's gonna cover up part of it, so I didn't want my blue all covered up. So that's gonna go down here like that. Hi, Linda Corster, nice to see you again. Okay, so, hi, Lynn Beasley. Sometimes it happens, thanks, Laura. Sometimes it happens when you have designer paper, it's 12 by 12, you cut a column of four inches, a column of four inches, and then the last column is maybe a hair short. Um, Oh, hi, Patsy. Um, so when that happens to you guys, though, then your mat might be wider or like longer than the designer paper. Like I see mine's a hair over right here. You can kind of see it, but there's, um, it's not much, you guys, but there's just this little bit of white there. So I'm gonna take my trimmers and trim that in just a second. Well, I'm gonna do it right now. Um, so let me grab my little baby cutter. If that ever happens, all you have to do is trim off a little bit of your card mat and it'll get rid of it. No problem. So it just, that's how designer paper works. Sometimes it's a hair short of 12 inches. So whoever gets that last column might be just a hair short. And then you just cut your mat a little shorter. So then this guy is gonna get set something about like right there. Okay. And now we're gonna prep the back of this with some tear and tape. And we are going to make, uh, put our linen thread. So I believe everybody got 20 inches of tear and tape in their kit. And what you're gonna want to do is, in the, okay, so let's, so this, we did this last night during game night, you guys. We have to prep the back of this with a little tear and tape 
that will help our linen thread. Yeah, Kathy, that little trimmer. Everybody loves that little trimmer. <laughs> All right, so you guys have your 20 inches of linen thread. What I would do is cut yourself, can't go much over, right? You just need enough to tuck your tails behind. So you're gonna have about five inches, and you, I have three of them, you guys. So cut yourself three of them. And then because you put that tear and tape, you have to remember that the label's closer to the side right here. So let's make sure we have it the right way. So this is gonna go right about here. So when you set your linen thread on here, you wanna center this over. So you have a longer tail on the right and a shorter tail on the left. So there's one. And then you have a second one. And that, so by attaching it to the tear and tape, it's gonna help it just kind of stay in place. So there's a second one. And then we have one more, and that's gonna attach onto the tear and tape. So I have longer on this side because there's more exposed. So let's just make sure that this is gonna work. So perfect. Now what we're gonna do is you can grab your tool here. Somehow you just have to get those three ends through on each side. So kind of go back. Hi, D Serena. I swoop in and I grab them, okay? So all three of those ends. I love these labels because I love weaving this ribbon through it. Um, it's kind of crazy because of the linen thread. Um, hi, Doris Monson. So now though, I do have this popped up. So this is where I'll go and grab my dimensionals. And I like to cut off the sides of these to give me skinny strips here. So we're gonna do that and then cut it in half. And then put, so I'm creating a channel. We did this last night too. So we're gonna create a little channel. Hi, Lane Reback. <laughs> Gillies is open, yay. <laughs> did you get some ice cream? Oh, Gillies is so good. I love their s'mores sundae with a little graham cracker crumbled on it with some marshmallow. Instead of chocolate, I get caramel. All right, so you guys, I got this. And what I want is my linen thread to kind of cover up the seam on the left-hand side right there. So that's now placed. Oh, I didn't take the back off of that. Ha ha. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? It's like, why doesn't it stick? Oh, I guess you gotta take the back off, right? All right, and because I had the other side prepped with tear and tape, hi, Jennifer Jones, thanks for sharing. Because I had the other side prepped with tear and tape, I should just be able to take the end and flip it over and then take this end, flip it over. So hopefully you guys cut it long enough so that you had enough on that other side. You can't quite center it. It doesn't work centered. Hi, Mitzi Stanley. All right, so you got your tear and tape here. Oh, a crochet hook, Linda Adkins. That's a good idea. A crochet hook would work. My mom has a ton of them. I don't know if I have a crochet hook in the house. Thanks for sharing, Elaine and Mitzi. I appreciate it. Hi, Kathy Groves. All right, so this is gonna go onto our card front here. And, all right, so you should have five inches left of your, let's pretend that's about five inches. You should have about that much left. So what we do with our little Pelican Dude is prep the back with it with some tear and tape. So I'm gonna put um, two strips of it so that it's going from like each end of the pillar or the beam. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> this looks like there's rope wrapped around here. Well, to make it look official, like this is gonna be official business, guys. You're gonna put the end of your linen thread into the tear and tape and follow your rope around here. And you're just gonna go around it. And I think you should have enough to do a few times. So get that guy right there and then one more. I'm gonna have him come up like that, all right? And then because you got the tear and tape back there, it should catch it. And what I'm gonna do 
is, thank you, Patsy. I'm gonna put a piece of tear and tape right over the top of it just to secure it and hold it. And then I'm gonna grab some dimensionals and put two there. And it looks like I only have some little guys that are black. So we're gonna put one for his head because it fits better that it's smaller there. And we're gonna pop this up. Now that linen thread has some height here already. <clears throat> oh, hi, Louise Power. So this has already got, it's popped up about as high as the dimensional with that one. So um, the linen thread is. So now this is going to get set right about here. Oh gosh, I didn't forget to stamp the birds, I promise. <laughs> this happened on the last card or the last time too. When, I, when Diane and I actually designed this, the birds were an afterthought. So don't worry. Now, if you don't trust yourself, you might, um, you might wanna do your birds before you start assembling, but I'm rolling with it now, you guys. So um, we're gonna trust that you can't see these black dimensionals peeking out the back here. So the one cloud because we didn't know where to put the birds until we had our clouds up. So I am going to put one cloud there and then the other cloud is going to go here at the top. And then now I know, okay, well, my, bar, my birds can go there and there. So this is a single little dude here, a little bird. I need to get the basic gray ink and you have to be very, very careful, you guys. Trust me, careful. You definitely do not want to make a halo. You've just invested all this time and energy into making this really pretty card. And you want to practice, let it marinate, set it on there. Okay, good. It's going to work. You just don't want to squish so hard that you get a halo. I mean, then your bird's going to be really holy, right? Which is okay. Um, that's fine. But you'd probably prefer not to have a holy bird on your card. So there's one. And then this guy's gonna go like that. Yay, okay, that's it. Now in here, we might as well put a couple birds flying through the air with the greatest of ease as well. At some point, whoever gets this card as a prize for commenting on this video uh, can stamp their own sentiment on the inside if they like. So I think we're done with, I'm gonna put this under here so we can glue this on the inside. And I didn't leave myself many gems <laughs> to choose from. You guys got some darker, medium colored blue gems. I think I only have some light blue gems left for myself here for this card. So we are going to, and I don't even have big ones left, you guys. I Oh, I might have these guys. Okay, so I do have some darker blue. I don't have any big ones left. You guys got all of my big ones. <laughs> I saved just the little ones for myself and... I did save some of these darker ones though. So he's gonna go maybe there. <laughs> oh, I crack you up, Penny, I love it. So find your spots for all your little jammies. You have three of them, okay? You should have a, a big one and then two small ones is what you should have for this, hopefully. Yes, you guys, this wave collection was awesome. So. That's what we got, you guys. I, I probably made it look a lot easier than what it was. <laughs> oh, Kathy, you are getting better, better at the blending. That's great to hear. Okay, so that's the first card, you guys. That one, no problem. I had that one. I could have done that in my sleep, I think. So it's the next two that we're going to talk ourselves through them and just... I wish Diane was watching, but she got home from San Francisco, I think the other day. Uh, she was out there for vacation, and I'm not sure. I hope she made it home. She didn't tell me she made it home, but I wish she was watching right now. She could give me some guidance, but we're going to get through it together, you guys. All right. So card number one is awesomeness, <laughs> is what Doris says. I love it. All right. Fabulous card. Okay. We're going to do this one next because this one doesn't scare me as much. <laughs> All right. So you guys, this is a little bit of a fun fold. So it flips up and it flips down. Like I love these kind of folds. It's so awesome. It just makes the card look a little different. Uh, the background here is embossed with um, <laughs> um, the splatters embossing folder. So what does that mean? In the new mini catalog, well, it's not new anymore. It's been around for three months, but there. 
I didn't even do it on my kit. Oh, man. Okay, well, we're going to do it as a group. <laughs> so it, maybe I thought to myself when I was kidding this up, I got to teach you guys some embossing. Since we don't do that live in the flesh very often, I'll have to run over and get... Um, get the machine so be very careful though you guys you have two little silver birds and it's hard to even see them but these are part of the die so that they cut out those little guys uh so let's set them there this piece is the one we need to emboss and i want to show you this i guess <laughs> um you should have two little slips of ribbon one is the white organdy and one is actually pool party sheer both of these two ribbons are carrying over to the next annual catalog all right so we'll set them there then you have these two random dies in your kit, die cut pieces. They're with the coral um, foil, and there are two waves in here. So one and two. And so one of them, has, so one has three drips and one has two drips. And what do I mean by that? <laughs> it looks like um, hot fudge dripping off of a sundae, right? So there's one, two, three, and then this other one has two. So that, so each of those were used. I definitely um, did not poke out any of your bits and parts. Um, Anna may have. So the first 32 people might have yours poked out, but I definitely do not poke out pieces <laughs> um, for people. So I didn't even do my own. Um, so you guys are watching me do this live with you right now. And so you have to poke out all these little things that are part of the die cut. Now, when I cut these, pieces because you don't need the entire if you look at the card here you're only getting a little subset of the wave right you're only getting this little section so I definitely cut little rectangles that were this big and then that's what I use to die cut so you're definitely not getting the full wave on this card that's the next card you're getting the full wave so you should have those little things poked out ha doors so the only reason I know that is because I really had to investigate Diane's card to understand how it was put together. <laughs> so, all right, so you got those two things. You have a piece of designer paper and underneath it in your kit should be its mat. That is for your outside. You have two white pieces and then you have two Pacific point pieces. One is for your outside mat and one is for your inside mat, okay? And they are layered in such the way that it should be white mat, white mat, and DSP mat. Okay, then you have your coral, not coral, ha <laughs> ha, Coastal Cabana. Comica, oh, what is it, the Cabana song? Um, so it's like eight and a quarter by four and a quarter, scored at five and a half, which gives you your traditional, thanks for sharing, Gloria. It gives you your traditional A2 size. And then this is three and an eighth by eight and a half, and then scored at four and a quarter, right in half. So that is what is going to make your flippy and your floppy here. So flip down and flop up, right? All right. So before we proceed, though, I want to... Normally, I have all my embossing done for you guys so that you don't have to watch me emboss. But you know what? I wanted to show you something, apparently, when I made this kit. <laughs> so give me 10 seconds. Um, oh, you betcha, Lynn. Um, let me get my machine here. And we're gonna get the the, 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 the the embossing folder. So this is the stamp and cut and emboss machine, AKA SCEM, S-C-E-M. And when you buy these embossing folders, they come as a set. They're called stripes and splatters. Stripes and splatters. They are um, compatible with the mini embossing machine uh, because they're less than three inches, or I think they might be exactly three inches. Oh, they're three and a half, but they fit on the mini. So here's the deal. Um, when you use these, they're not really conducive to embossing an entire mat because well, like, what the heck? It, it doesn't fit to the ends, right? So this is what... Every one of those in your kits, um, I emboss them for you. And I always like to put the spine in first. So I call it the fold or the spine or the folded edge. And I'm going to put this one in first. This is, the this is the 3D embossing folder. So this is the adapter plate that goes with it. You just use that on the top. 
and but now only half of it is embossed right <laughs> so oh man now we got to turn it around and we got to do the other side so I, what I did is you might see a seam or you might not okay so we're gonna put that side now I'm gonna run it back oops see this isn't gonna work now so if you see this it's too tall that's okay so what I'm gonna do now is put it this way and now it'll fit on the machine. Had I been more in the center, it would have been fine, but um, I had it closer to one end. And now when you have this embossed, it, you see that there might be this little line that goes through the middle where the folder kind of overlapped. Um, hi, Sharon Land, late to the game, but thanks for joining and sharing. Uh, it's right in the middle, but most of that gets covered up. So. That's the deal with these little guys. So what I'm designing with these, I will sometimes just emboss either the top half or the bottom half. Like, for example, un momento, this card right here. So this is for the May monthly class. Because this bottom portion is only three inches by four, you can see it's the splatters and it's just the bottom. So you don't have to worry about doing a whole mat with it then. So... All right, so let's see here. Put that back and get this out of the way. So I wonder if I really forgot to emboss it or if I really thought, oh, this will be a good learning opportunity for you guys to see that. <laughs> I can't remember. All right, let's get glue happy for just a moment. So this and this can go here. Hi, Nancy Charles. All right, so we're going to put a little adhesive on our splattery background, and we're going to do our designer paper. And because we can, I'm going to prep this too. You guys, when I have the glue bottle open, I maximize my gluing efforts. So this will go on here because the glue doesn't dry right away. So I've got a little room to wiggle wiggle with it. So that's going to go here. You just got to be careful you don't get glue everywhere. <laughs> it takes a lot of practice, right, to get that glue not to go where you don't want it. All right, so that's going to go here. And because it's liquid glue, you can still wiggle around a little bit. And then this guy, I'm going to fold that down. And then that gets centered kind of on this splattery blue background. Okay, and so that's how that's going to go. And just because I want to get this put together. Oh, you're very welcome, Louise. You know, it's like trickery. Like, who would have ever thought you could do that whole page with just that little folder? Just you got to run it through a couple times. And now this one, think about how you want this to be seen. Um, I think I'm going to go like this. Nope. Um, I think I'm, so that dark blue will get covered up when it's shut. So I think I'm going for that more. So this is another 12 by 12 page, you guys, that is just, I got a hair. I got to get rid of it. <laughs> Make Nancy proud. All right. It's just like swirls all over the place. You guys, I don't know what pattern you got, but it's going to have some sort of different blues and greens and this aqua -y color in it. So, all right. So we've got a lot of this done now. So what's left here? We have a white piece and a white piece that we need to do a little stamp action on. We've got happy birthday and a wave. And then on the inside, we've got birds and a pelican. The pelican looks to be in gray. So, okay. Gray, crumb cake, whichever you want. But we need, so what I like to do, if there is a sentiment on the page, I like to do the sentiment first. The reason is because I screw up less often on focal images than I do on sentiments. So if I know I get the sentiment straight, then I don't care so much about the focal image. Whereas if I do the focal image and then the sentiment is bad, then I got to flip it over and do them both over. So this way I get my sentiment out of the way first. And that's going to go right here, somewhere there. <laughs> okay, I'm happy. Okay, good with that. So then... Um, yeah, so they generally, you know, when they do this, um, oh, Blind, I'm glad your song came back. When they do these exclusive promotions, they don't carry the designer paper over usually. Like, if you guys recall, if you were around with Stampin' Up! last year, they had that Butterfly Brilliance suite that they came out with. 
and they didn't carry over the butterfly paper. And in fact, it was out within two weeks, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to do crumb cake. I think Diane used um, basic gray, but I'm going to go with crumb cake on my inside piece here. And you can see that the whole thing is not on. So you guys, that butterfly brilliance, a lot of people were very unhappy that it was gone within like two weeks. But you guys, that's what happens. It's while supplies last. Uh, so it's like you can't dilly dally or wait around and think, oh, I'm gonna get it in like three weeks when I, you know, when I'm thinking about it. No, you gotta sometimes gotta take action and and get it taken care of. Uh, and it's odd that the DSP is still there, but the foil paper isn't. So, oh, all right, birds are next. So we're done with this one. We're done with the Pacific Point, but we need gray and we need. I got lots of little piles here. We're gonna do some birds on our inside. And I think she's got, oh, she's got like four of them up there. So let's, I like to have the card here. Let's look at this. Okay. So we got one here, there, something like this. Hi, Jean Terwilliger. <laughs> Catching up on work. I like three, you guys. I, I think I'm going to, oh, we're going to do one more right there. You know what? We got, can't have four though. So we're going to put one guy there. Okay. They're flying into the sunset. So we're done with the gray. And then last stamping, I think, is on the front. There's a wave here. So that's this big daddy papa <laughs> stamp. You guys, I don't ever use this block. This is the F block. <laughs> it's big. All right. So what happens is it's stamped in Coastal Cabana and then it's colored in. So we're going to show you up close and personal. You can see it stamped in Coastal Cabana and colored in with some balmy blue. Hi, Heather Burgreen. Okay, so how do we do that? We are going to <laughs> we're gonna make it happen. That's how we're going to do it. So I'm going to get a different piece of paper. Let's try this one. It's a little less distracting. And ultimately, we just need to get this wave right here. All right, so <laughs> I feel like we need a bigger piece. Hang on. So this is what I do with my leftover mystery card night clues. I put them in my drawer and use them for paper down here. All right, so when you have such a big stamp like this, I generally hold the ink pad and stamp up, like I ink it upside down. And I've never used this stamp before because you remember Diane designed this card. So, all right, it works. So <laughs> let's ink it up again. You guys practice. I don't discourage practicing before you actually go to your live in the flesh paper but so this is going to get stamped something like this I'm guessing like cross your fingers shut your eyes and just hope that it turns out for the best oh Latokia balmy blue go for the balmy blue or do you have Latokia do you have Pacific Point you could do Pacific Point at second strength, okay? I think that could work. All right, so there's that. Let's ink off a little bit. Now, if you look at this card, though, she's got lots of little splatteries. Um, yeah, you can kind of see them. And the edge is sponged with the um, Pacific Point. Perfect. Do the Pacific Point then, I think. So we're going to grab Pacific Point here. And the edges are sponged so slightly. So grab yourself a little dauber. So right now that looks a little bit crazy with colors going on, but we're not done. So just, we're gonna kind of sponge the edge here with a little Pacific Point that will bring in the background color, which is the, the background matte is Pacific Point. And we're gonna just go all the way around the edge here. So there is some splattering and the splattering is done with a Stella pen and we're going to grab a little baby block to get some ink. So grab a little baby block and you're just going to put a little on the edge of your block here. You don't need a lot. And the thing is with the Stella pen is you got to have a really good brush that's hydrated mine weren't doing so well last night. I need to refill, like I'm getting to the end of it. I need to refill mine with some rubbing alcohol and water. 
If that's the case and that happens to you, what I recommend you guys do, um, take your little brush tip and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it underneath some water um, just to get a little water in the brush tip, okay? So I'm just getting water. So I ran a little water in that and I'm gonna put the water off to the side here so that my brush tip got a little, so there's water. I don't know if you guys saw, I just, I got a little water in here. And now I'm gonna go into that ink color over there. So I've got some of the blue in my brush. You be careful because what happens is we're going to add some spl uh, splatter. And you can go back and get more. You gotta be careful because it goes everywhere depending on like how hard you're hitting here. I do recommend having a good Stella pen that has um, like the stout, like the actual glitter in it. And I hold a bone folder. You could even take a scissors. Like sometimes you could just take your scissors. Now, we're gonna see if you guys can see this on the camera. I don't know if you will be able to, but there's splattering. There's, it just, it just adds a little bit of splatter. I didn't get any big ones though. So I'm going to see if I can get a little bit more ink in the corner that's a little darker. I'm gonna try one more time because I want you guys to see if you can really get some blue splatters. It makes it look like there's mist coming off of, of the wave. So you can see that there's blue in the Stella there. That's like the bluish color. And now it's all over the front of this. The lighting is really not gonna do it justice, but I can see it, it looks cool. So we're not done though. <laughs> all right, so when you're done doing that with your Stella, you gotta wipe out the color because if you go to color something the next time, it'll completely make it blue. So. Yeah, the sponged edges really soften it up, but we're not done. So this wave is colored in and you need to use either balmy blue. I think it's the balmy blue light. So we're gonna grab the balmy blue light and the wave is now colored in and it's at your discretion. Oh, I see that my wave didn't um, go all the way to the edge. <laughs> so this is gonna go here and this is gonna go here. So that's okay. I'm gonna take a marker. So I have the Coastal Cabana marker. And we're gonna pretend that it went to the edge here. Huh, there you go. Just fill it in. Pretend that it was stamped all the way to the edge. And then what happens is you take like a light blue marker and you're going to color in. Be careful when you hit the edge of your paper. You don't wanna catch your brush on that really hard because it could wreck your brush if you do it a lot. So we're just coloring in our wave with a blend here. So a light balmy blue mixed with the Coastal Cabana ink pad, okay? So when I go along the edge, I try to follow it versus brushing back and forth. And up here, you gotta use a little bit of your discretion where you need to color it or not color it. There are these little dots that are up there, I'm not coming, I'm not gonna cover them up. Okay, and when it comes down to here, you're just gonna kinda swoop down. Perfect. So, if you want a little darker, you can add a little more color to it. By going over the second time makes it a little darker. All right, so that's what we've got. Now I looked at Diane's and I can see her wave comes down at an angle more. Mine stayed up high and that's okay. What's gonna happen here with your die cut pieces, the looking at her card here, the, the three drip is on the top and the two drip is on the bottom. So this is going to come down like that and then the three drip is gonna come over the top of it and it's just gonna kind of fill it in. So. Uh, you're hearing the waves, yay. So you can see here on the sample, the wave is down a hair lower and on mine, I stamped it up higher. So you do, when you stamp your wave, you don't want it to be up high or these pieces aren't gonna work such so well. Hi, Kay Weir, thanks for sharing. Okay, so now what you gotta do is 
add these waves to the front of your card here. So not a lot of glue, you guys. So I'm just going to put glue in random spots here that are kind of... <laughs> my glue's not coming out. I don't want to squeeze it very hard. Oh, there it came out. Okay. And then the thing is, when you put this down, you don't want to squish it all around. You want to get it kind of set where you need it first and hope that it's right where you need it without pushing it all over the place. So try to have it on the top and curving down like that. So that one came down to the bottom. Don't worry if you have any hanging off the edge. You're going to take your scissors and cut that off. Okay. And then you have this other piece that's something like this. Oh, there's one more that comes out. Um, you know, I popped out all those pieces. Those pieces, oh, here, this one needs to get popped out too. Some of those pieces could probably have been added to the card. I thought about that when I was throwing them away. Some of those pieces could have been added to make more swirls. Um, and I might, oh, I see them. They're right in the garbage, right on the top. We're going to see if we can salvage any of them and add a little more bling to the front of the card. So you want to make sure you get these ends and then your drip's good here. Your chocolate fudge. Okay, so this now is going to go and fill in this area here. Something like that. Okay, now I have, if I'm very careful, I wasn't careful. All right, um, here's one. Yes, guys, I'm digging through the garbage. It's just paper though. Um, okay, well, now it's all buried. They, they were right on the top. But if you save these little scraps from the inside, you could potentially add them to your card, depending on how they could work in here. Like just to add another little wave to it. It's just a thought. Like um, right here, there's none. So I'm wondering if I took this and cut off part of that top part so it's less curvy, right? Could add that right in there, right? So, uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, so this guy is, and, and actually the way I cut that, that'll be perfect. So, you guys, on your little bits and parts that you pulled out, so you see I stamped my wave up higher than Diane did, and so that's okay. If you have those inner parts of your wave, <laughs> just glue it there, and then... There's one more little guy that I just cut off, you guys. So seriously, if you still have yours or if they're in your garbage, you could take them out and add them here if you needed to, okay? There, okay? So it, it helped fill in that space right there. If I wanted to find one more, so there were like four of those pieces, you could put another one right there. Um, if I can find it really quick, I might just do it. There's one, yay. Okay, so here's another. I found a dimensional back. Okay, so here's another one. And that guy's gonna go, so here you go, guys. These were the, your inner things that, if you have them in yours, great. And if not, so like I'm gonna put that one right there. And we're gonna glue this one in here too. <laughs> you guys, this is using scraps. Look at me, I dug in the garbage for this. Okay. I'm going to leave it like that, though. <laughs> All right. So now you have this part that's hanging over. So you're going to need to take your scissors and trim that off. And there you guys get more. Look at this. We have one more we can use. How exciting. Okay. I have a perfect spot for it, too, because I thought, oh, if I had one more, I'd put it right on that curve. Okay. Right here, there's a perfect spot for it. There. Okay. Happiness is having your wave complete. All right. So use up those little scrapper ronies. All right. So, <laughs> yay. Okay. So, you guys, I hope you got what just happened there. Had I stamped that lower like Diane's, like she had an intended, it would have been good. And pretty much that is what's helping us get that top part of her card. 
All right. So um, if you guys did get foil paper, you could always cut yourself like like just hand cut some little slivers like that and you can get your own added back to your you know get them get more to fill in if there wasn't enough for you squish that down good okay so now this is flipped over this is flipped over <laughs> yes perfection sandy you know it we can make it happen if we can all right so let's put that not on the back there so one of these goes on this blue piece here. I know it's upside down. It's okay. Uh, yes, yeah, great use of the scraps, you guys. I love it. Okay, so there's that one. Uh, oh, you like my way better. It's a little bit bigger. Probably that's why. All right, so this other blue piece. So these were the same size. The Pacific points and these whites were the identical sizes. And one's for the top and one's for the inside. Now, I'm only gluing in the inside right now, you guys. And you know why? Because there's ribbon. So, let's get this one on the inside. <laughs> you know, I was afraid I wasn't going to like mine better because about missing out on having the blue. Because, you guys, we cut... I had Anna cut what was needed to make it based off of that. But when I realized I stamped my way bigger, I needed more blue. And so, it was perfect that there was scraps. So, yay! All right, so that's our inside. Now... This right here, you need to grab your tear and tape. Um, oh man, it's right there. And what you'll do on that left back side is do these, basically all you're gonna do is fold it in half. I think everybody's got about an inch and a half or two, plenty. So you're just going to fold it in half Right like that, it's not gonna necessarily stick because of, oh, and this one actually, oh, put it underneath it. No, you know what? So this one, do this one first, the white one, and then do the pool party one next to it. And then what you're gonna have to do is put another piece of tear and tape there, and now they'll be able to fold up. So this pool party one, flips first. If you want it offset, you can, or if you want it exactly lined up, do that. But that one, and now the white one kind of nestles right over the top of it. And now that's how you create that little tab. And then yes, I would go ahead and put another piece of tear and tape right there. And now we can put liquid glue on here and put that on our top. like that okay yay okay now we have some gems so let's see here <laughs> i'm back to my i'm gonna use all the bluish ones these light blue ones so i'll grab this and we've got up on the so you guys have three in your kits there should be a, a larger one and um two smaller ones. I only have small ones, so that's what I'm using. There's two up there and one right there. We've already used our Stella, which is awesome. I don't recall using Stella on this card, but we am going to leave it. I was going to say Stella. You could Stella your label a little bit. So you can hear the waves roaring. Oh my gosh, can you picture that little turtle up on the top there riding the wave? <laughs> We're not done, we have birds. Oh my gosh, I'm like, it looks naked up there, you guys. We need birds. Okay, so we're gonna put a bird there and we're gonna put a bird. I'm doing mine the opposite. So you guys, there's two different styles of birds. One's more of like V and one's more of a flat V. I think I wanna put the flat V there because that'll fill in that space. <laughs> I know, Kathy, this thing is almost seen as better days. <laughs> All right, so a little bit of glue, dot, dot. Oh, man, not a lot. There it is, okay? Come on, you guy. Let's get you out of there. it is, okay. So I'm putting my wider band bird here. And then the more V one at the top because there's less room at the top. All right, so... <clears throat> I think we have success now. Those birds are what's going to really seal the deal here with making it finished. All right. 
I think that we got it. If you guys get into a hot, sticky glue mess with your glue on foil, you can get your glue gone, adhesive remover, it looks like this, get a little Q-tip, take your Q-tip, dip it in the cover, and then just gently wipe off any residue of the glue that you get on the foil part, okay? And then you get that stickiness off. I know it's really difficult to glue little thin um, little pieces like this, but if you do get the glue on, you can get it off with your Q-tip, okay? So, and the glue gone. So, doo -doo -doo -doo. we got her done, you guys, yay! So, we got Diane's card here, and then a little bit bigger wave action going on with this one. And we saved the day by having scraps. <laughs> you never know when those scraps are going to come in handy. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So we have two of them done. And we have this one last. Oh, man. <laughs> We're going to get it. So here we'll set him there. And we'll take a little drinky drink. All right. I think for this one. We definitely need <clears throat> navy ink. Hmm, that might be it. Okay, navy ink. So grab your card kit. Lots of pieces in this one too. So in this case, you guys will have two wave sets, a silver and the navy. In the navy, you have a white cloud and a white cloud that are normal basic white paper. You have a little strip for your sentiment. You have a pearlescent cloud. So Diane did not use pearlescent paper. She just stelled it with a blue um, ink in her Stella. I did a, a, a pearlescent moon for you guys. Then these little bits and parts are actually, um, they're dyes. And it's crazy because they're here. There's two of them. Just And the birds are here on a single die. These are actually the bottoms for your clouds. So they they kind of polish off your clouds. If you wanted to, you could also put these for your waves. So I've seen people add these into your, their waves as well. Okay, so you should have two of those. You have, two, so this is Diane, she loves her double matting, you guys. So you got a black and a white and a black and a white, right? So one sets for the inside, one sets for the outside. Peaceful nighttime, yes. Um, Stormy night is what I think I called it. <laughs> all right. So, all right. I'm thinking here, guys, what we want to do. So we're going to clean up our stamps, though, because we definitely don't want the other color on them. So let's stamp off our little pelican dude here. And we need to stamp off our little bird, bird, bird. Bird is the word. Let's see here. We're going to use a scrap for my drawer. Okay. Got that kind of off and happy birthday stamp off all right and then we gotta do our wave here so when this is so big like this I will take my chamois and bring my chamois to the stamp versus trying to go into this case like that all right so I think that I already I'm going to grab this back out, and we're going to do our, <laughs> you guys, we're going to do the inside first, because that's the easiest. <laughs> All right, so Night of Navy ink, and let's look at our inside here. So it's just a little wave on the side here. The outside says, your strength is an inspiration. All right, so this, you can see that this edge part is not on there, so we're going to go down low enough where we don't have that. <laughs> We're going to make sure of it, and we're going to stay in the corner a little bit. So right here. Hi, Millie Kindle. All right, so that that is our inside. I think as long as I'm doing my inside, I'm going to throw a couple birds in here. The birds are, I don't know if birds. this bird is adorable, but <laughs> I think it'll add to it. So we're going to put a couple birds there. Cool, I'm good with that. That was basic gray, you guys. Thanks for sharing, Randy. All right, so our inside is done. So we'll set that off to the side here. Now, the front. Let's talk about the front. The whole stamp is on here. So 
When you line this up, we gotta make sure we get that whole thing on here. So we're gonna ink this up. Oh, Mary Carlos, I'm glad that you love these cards. I can't take credit from you guys. <laughs> I mean, um, Diane did design the two of them. <laughs> she did a fabulous job. I'm gonna just close this for right now. And we're gonna set this here. Make room, you guys. I don't wanna drop it. Okay, so I'm gonna try to make sure. So there's about an eighth of an inch from the bottom of the stamp where it's empty. And we're gonna bring this over like that. Oh, hi, Emily Mott from New Zealand. Oh, you just did your on tour, yay. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, give that a second to marinate. Oh, you guys. <laughs> I missed like an edge. Oh, you can't see it. You can see I'm, I missed the edge, like a 16th of an inch. <laughs> Let's just see if we're gonna be okay. And what I mean by okay is this die <laughs> is gotta go on here and it's gonna cover that up. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so I am not gonna restamp this because this blue yeah, Susan, it's a large stamp wave. That is going to cover it up perfectly. I am not redoing that. Okay, good. So that might officially be it for this stamp. So we'll set him off to the side. Then let's do our sentiment strip, which is right there. And it is, your strength is an inspiration. We're going to stamp it here at the bottom. It's down on the right of hair. So I'm going to hold it up on the right of hair and it's better. Okay, so you guys get two shots at this. I know, Stamparatus time. <laughs> yeah, if you guys have a Stamparatus, it would definitely help. I'm not going to have my white under while I do that because... Oh, man. Guys, I know that the struggle is real on this one. Let's just see what happens. Oh my gosh. It was good except for I had navy ink on my fingernail and I got it on there. It's okay though. It's a wave. There's water everywhere, right? <laughs> All right. That's done. So we need some coloring to happen now. So these little clouds and our sky are going to be done with the blending brush. And... I just happen to have a blending brush over here that is clean. Yay. It looks like it's not clean, but it's it doesn't give me any color. So we're going to dip in. Whoa. You can see I just re-inked this ink pad. Okay. So got to be very careful. But we're going to make sure you do the right side, you guys, because when you put these little pieces on, they fit a certain way. So they'll fit that way, but it's not going to fit the other way, right? So the rolled edge needs to be your top. So we're just gonna add a little blue to our clouds. Okay, so there's one. You can have them darker, you can make them lighter. It's your cloud. If you had a little sponge dauber, that could work too. But we're just gonna add Then you might get ink on your fingers, you guys. It's okay. So, that'll be our cloud for that one. So, let's set them off to the side. This wave now, in consulting with Diane, you guys, so this little moon's gonna go over here, but in consulting with Diane, she said, don't get too much ink close to the wave. So stay away from it a little bit because it makes it look like the wave's kind of putting off this mist. So I am going to start at the top and work my way in, dipping off or like brushing off a little. And because you have such a dark color, it's gonna get darker faster. So I'm just going around here. I have glue on this page. Oh, look at that. You can see how much <laughs> ink is getting on here. It's really shaping up. And I'm going to not get too close to my wave. You guys can tell I was thinking as I was talking. All right. I might be 
getting happy with this. And let's go with that for right now. We can, so this little sentiment is gonna go here and that's gonna cover up some of that white there. And I still have a little white going on. I feel like Diane, she used some Pacific Point. You can kind of see there's a lighter blue there. We're gonna do that because I feel like she did that. <laughs> so let's grab Pacific Point. And now when we go to get Pacific Point though, if you're gonna use the same brush, which is okay, I would definitely get out any of your Knight of Navy that you have in there so that it's a little bit lighter. Now go to your Pacific Point. Definitely brush off a little bit. <clears throat> We're going to go. I'm figuring out. <laughs> We're going to go like right about here. So this may or may not be seen <laughs> because I have quite a bit of uh, Knight of Navy on there, but we're going to see once what happens. Oh, you can kind of see it. You can kind of see it. So you can see there's a little bit of that Pacific point kind of rolling up over the edge. Um, you don't have to do it. You can do it. You guys, it's your sky. <laughs> it's however you envision it, but I'm going to try to blend that out a little bit. Okay. Then the marker action down here. You'll need some lighter blue blend. Um, you could use balmy blue if you wanted, but what Diane said she used was the light Knight of Navy. Just for now, we're going to close this up and see once if we can get this to look good with this color and see if we might be done. So we have the light. So we're just going to color this in. Again, be careful with the edges of your paper. Not that you kind of wreck your marker tip. Okay. So you can see that the color is showing through <clears throat> where the white is. And then um, more perfection. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> oh, funny. So there's that. Okay. Now this guy, you're going to round the edge here. And I'll hold it up to the screen and you guys are going to be able to see where that stamp was in navy that it still shows pretty good through here. So we're going to round that. And I'm going to leave it where I'm not going to go back and hit more areas because once we glue those waves down, you're not going to see the splotchiness. But I think the splotchiness is going to look cool because not all water looks the same. So you can see that you can we, the waves are still there like where we stamped. But now the, it's colored in and we're going to just move this off to the side and we're going to see what it looks like. So the silver one now is your two drip <laughs> and the navy is the three drip. So if you need to go in and conduct any surgery on your waves, get your scalpel out and start picking at the parts that need to get picked at. All right, let's get that guy. He was stuck in there. I think that, oh, there's one over here. There, there we go. And then, so we're going to lay this on here just to see what it looks like before we actually get glue happy. And then you'll have to pick out any of these. So this navy was the like one, two, three, our hot fudge sundae, right, dripping color. All right, so these were the pieces that I don't know if yours are, picked out. Anna said she likes to, I think Anna said that she likes to pick out the pieces. And I'm like, no, everybody can do it themselves. <laughs> Save time for yourself to cut more paper, more stuff, right? All right. So let's just set that there and let's see what this looks like. I think that's going to be cool. And then this will go here. We've got our moon over Miami right there and our clouds. So I'm thinking I'm happy and I don't need to brush any more color on. This is where if you guys want to add a little bit more color, you could do that. <clears throat> so let's get our waves glued down. So let's see this again. That needs to fit right like that. I just don't need to glue the end. So this is going to be really difficult, you guys, <laughs> especially if you hate liquid glue. Um, if you have uh, 
let's see how do I want to hold this if you have those adhesive sheets and you want to use that for stuff like this to make these into stickers I would definitely highly recommend that but again we do have that goo gone so if we get glue where you don't want it we can always clean it up later but we're just I'm not squeezing so hard that it's putting a lot of glue it's just enough that it's gonna hold it down and we're gonna put a little there more right there okay I didn't put glue on the end because I know that's getting cut off and I'm gonna line my bottom corner up my bottom edge hot fudge when you see the wave card yes Doris I love it okay self-adhesive sheets would be perfect yes you guys but with 40 of these kits and all of these waves, I don't have enough adhesive sheets to go around. So um, that's why you guys get to do it the hard way first. And then if you have them at home, you can always go back and make more and use your adhesive sheets. Yay. Okay. So again, this can get glued down and the little bit on the end is not going to need glue. So I'm going to put a little bit. Yeah, those self-adhesive sheets are perfect if you have them. I mean, if you're at home and making onesie twosies, this no problem to use those adhesive sheets but when you have if you're going to make like a hundred or 20 or even 10 it like you'll go through those adhesive sheets really fast where you can see i'm hardly using any glue at all on these it's just it gets to be messy if you're not good with it you can put the glue on a silicone yes mary carl's good idea you got it so what mary just said is using a silicone sheet um, put that down because you guys that cleans up really easily and getting a sponge and daubering glue on the back and that works perfectly well as well <laughs> perfectly great as well oh you guys that side <clears throat> i don't know if you noticed it but that side where i missed stamping it i actually colored that in with the blend and you couldn't see it all right so <clears throat> what mary was talking about is we have these silicone sheets and you could have put the cloud on here upside down Put a little glue on the corner and took a sponge and then blotted the sponge and then blotted that all over <clears throat> and that would have helped get the glue exactly where you need it too so you could have done it with these little guys then as well lots of bits and parts you guys all right so that goes on the little cloud It does help to have nails, I will admit. All right, so that goes right there. Ooh, man. Okay, and then you have one more little cloud here. <clears throat> so, a little bit of glue here. You guys, we're almost, we're almost at the end. This is the, I think this card made you work for it the hardest with this little bit of gluing here. All right, so let's find this guy here. And set that down right there <clears throat> okay um let's flip this over and cut off the extra part that we have here and let's grab both of our white mats you guys can see where i like they say when you are uh, do a good job coloring on the um the back side of where you color with blends the more you see the darker it is that means the better that you did <laughs> that's what i've always heard all right i thought this was such a stunning card too sue i i def i when diane sent me a picture of this card i was in awe i'm like holy moses diane you did a great job so yeah louise i just caught your comment about the ink blending adding color um it really adds to the mood of the card, yeah. And leaving it white around there, too, that sets the stage. All right, so now these both can flip over. Oh, hang on. I missed putting my dude up here, my son. Hey, okay, not my son, my moon. So here's what I'm going to do. Because I missed putting this on here, it needs to go right there. So I'm going to pretend. <laughs> I'm going to pretend I didn't forget. And I'm going to prop it up against here. And I need to cut off that way. And I need to cut off this way. 
like that. All right, so now I have that ready to fit right in the corner there, okay? So it's okay if you forgot. I mean, you, it would have been easier to do it um, with the black not attached, but it's okay. You can see I just fixed it. <laughs> All right, so that is going to go right in the corner here. Perfect. All right, we got our moon set. And then these, this bigger one is popped up with dimensionals. So we're going to put three little dudes on here. And then the bottom one is flat. So we'll get this prepped. And let's get these glued onto our card base. I don't remember if I burnished this, so let's... It feels like it was still rolling, so let's do that. Let's get some glue on the backs of these basic black mats. And this is our innard. I'm gonna go here. And then we'll put the other one on the outside. And now it's really gonna come together like that. And then this little guy is flat. So it's like the big cloud is in front of it. So a little liquid glue back there. And he's down lower, let's say right there. And he's kinda hanging out right there. Okay, and then our sentiment is also popped up. I'm gonna grab, I have one on here that lost its top, I think. Maybe that was it. I was like, yeah, I could feel that it was already gone. Sometimes they catch and then you already have the backing off. So this is going to go flush on this side and it's gonna ride the bottom of that wave right here. Oh yeah, <laughs> chick chick bow. Yes, oh Emily, you're gonna love it when you get your hands on it. All right, gems. <laughs> oh, I think I saved myself a few of the dark blue right there, I have three. I think I'm just gonna use two of those and the light blue as well. So let me grab this and I've got one there. We'll put a little light blue one. She's got one over here. I'm just copying her. <laughs> like sometimes placing the gems is a hard decision on where to put them. All right. Hi, Diane. There you are. You guys, Diane just joined us. Give her a round of applause. She did a great job designing. She designed these two cards right here for us for class. So thank you. <laughs> because of her, you guys have this class tonight. <laughs> if it wouldn't be for her, we would not be sitting here right now. <laughs> so Diane, everybody is loving your cards. So we literally, I hope your vacation to San Francisco was successful and smooth and you got home okay. And you didn't get held up anywhere, but you did a fabulous job. Everybody is ooing and aahing over this card right here. So, <laughs> Diane, you knocked it out of the ballpark. They said that the blending really sets the mood for this card and that it was just awesome to have all this. It's like a stormy night, kind of. It's just very stunning. So, you guys, these were the three cards that we made tonight for class, um, all very different, you guys. Like you see this one over here and you see a sunny, beautiful, bright, si sunshiny day. And then you see this pelican just hanging out, having fun. And then you see this one and it's like, oh my gosh, you see the wave rolling in and you just make sure that you're not at the bottom of it, right? <laughs> but it says your strength is an inspiration and waves are really strong. So you could send that to somebody that needs some, uh, a little encouragement or just to let them know how strong they really are. And then this one is just like bright and cheerful as well, um, but a whole different color combination. So like completely like universal cards here too. Like they could go for guys or girls or anybody in the middle, I guess too. So I love it. So you guys, this is fabulous. So I'm very thankful for you, Diane, for letting me have the privilege to share your designs with everybody. Um, and you know, Diane, when it was all said and done, we I have 39 people that did this class. I'm, I have one set left. 
and I haven't seen any comments come through from anybody that, um, I haven't seen any comments come through for anybody to be my last taker, but what happens is if I end up with this class still left when somebody places an online order and they say in like two weeks, you're like, hey, do you have any past classes? And I can say, yeah, I have this one. So that works out good too. Um, so we did though have a bunch of people place orders to get this class for free and I have not put numbers next to them. So we're gonna do a little door prize for people. So Ann Bellinger, you are number one. Mary Lemke, you're number two. Um, Barbarco is three. Kathy King, number four. Kathy bought this collection and got this class for free. All right, so Kathy, you're number four. Um, Lynn Beasley, you're number five. Mo, you're number six. Uh, Millie, you'll be number seven. Uh, Anna is number eight. All right, then we're gonna drop down here. Becky Gandolfo, you're number nine. Naomi Worrell, you're 10. Cheryl Bowie, you're 11. Carla Lake, you are 12, and we have 12. So we are gonna do a little number, random number generator. Yes, Diane, we know that we did the one card together, but you still designed the other two and they're very fabulous as well. So, uh, yes, okay. So I'm gonna flip the camera down, you guys. This is my sign up area. <laughs> Normally I have you guys all like in a little section like this, like, you know, and it goes up the side. We had to add on a class, so I didn't even have like official documentation. We made ad hoc documentation. All right, so we are going to go to random number generator. We said number 12 with Carla Lake is the last scale. Number 12, click the word generate. Number 11, Cheryl Bowie, you are number 11. Okay, so I, how the door prize works, if you guys are new to me, uh, if you place an order to get a class for free and use my host code, during the class, when I do it live, I do a drawing um, because I have extra Stampin' Up! goodies. And how it works is your door prize gets mailed to you in your next package or it's available for porch pickup when you uh, are in the area and can pick it up. So I don't spend extra for shipping on it, but I'm giving away a prize. And so um, it goes out in your next kit. So like uh, Cheryl, Sherry Martin, uh, she won um, a prize from the New Horizons and her package just went out today. And the class was a few weeks ago, but it got put in her package that went out today, yay. So very, very cool. So I keep track of the cards over there. And once you have your next package, I try to put it in there and sometimes I forget. That's just how it goes. I do forget things, you guys. I think you know that by now. <laughs> so, all right. I wish you guys all lived closer to me, <laughs> as Luis just said. Um, I'd love for you guys all to be able to come and take in-person classes with me. All right, you guys, I left my hair down. It was cold in here in the hive. I turned the heat up what would you say, lower, because it was starting to get spring, but it was so cold in here. I had my hair down to keep me warm. It was keeping my back warm. So you don't generally have it all over the place, but yes, I needed it tonight to keep me warm. So, um, hmm. so tomorrow is a card buffet. I have it from 10 until two. I think I only have about 10 or eight or eight people signed up, maybe 10, but I had somebody that if you guys are, um, oh, Sue Somerville. You're not on the list. You have a list. Do you want another one, Sue? Because um, you already did the class. So I don't know if I, if somebody else did reach out to me in the interim that hasn't done the class, I would, I would opt to have them have it first. But if I don't have anybody and you want it, I would be willing to have you have it as well. So um, I'll make myself a note of that though. Um, so um, let's see here. So I was on Card Buffet. If anybody is local to me and interested, I had somebody that had to back out, please. Oh, please, I was reading your message too. I had somebody that was had to back out today. Um, so if anybody's local and looking to do Card Buffet tomorrow, I have a set of six of each of the cards. So one each of six of the cards. And you could come in person and make some six awesome cards. And then, you guys, I think I talked about this a year ago. Um, <laughs> I have to get my taxes done. So that's what I'm working on Sunday. Oh, yes, so taxes. And then um, I think that um, that rolls us right into Monday. And um, I have club night on Monday. So club night's Monday, you guys, and then we'll be live. Oh, let me show you what we got. Monday also is Let's Just Stamp. So you guys, I still have about five or six kits of this one left. Oh, Patsy, you're very welcome. I have about five or six kits of this class left. Let's just stamp. It's Monday at one. Um, don't hesitate in signing up. 
even though you might be at work, something just fell. Oh, I gotta tell you guys about this. Uh, if you are at work, you can always catch the replay. Um, every online class I do, uh, you get a PDF tutorial that you can look at the pictures or you can watch the Facebook Live. Um, <laughs> I haven't started my taxes, so you can't say that I'm still doing them. <laughs> Diane, that's funny. I literally downloaded TurboTax onto my computer and that's about as far as I got. So I don't know if that counts as starting them. <laughs> All right. And then you guys on Thursday night is... Um, it is the monthly card class. I think I have one or two sets of these left. So the hat card, the palm tree card, and the ladybug card. So a couple of those. Um, just so you guys know, the MS cards are ready to go too. Um, the MS benefit is April 30th. I just created the Facebook event. You can find it on the website already. But these are the five cards you will get. If you're not local, they will be made for you. Um, completed five cards, $25 donation. And otherwise, you can come in person on the 30th and make them yourself. Um, I have two uh, time slots, nine to noon and noon to three. And so you could come in person and make those. So those are ready to go. Um, and just let's see here, you guys. I'm taking registration still for uh, Flowering Fields, which is coming up the end of April, like towards the last week. Um, so these four beautiful cards, you can get it free with an order or you can buy them, pay the fee. If you buy the bundle, one of the bundles as your RSVP for class, you get a half a pack of the brushed brass butterflies. Um, ink, paper, scissors, you guys. I have some space on that one as well. This is where you get the goodie bag with designer paper, embellishments, and ribbon featuring beauty of the earth. So I have sets of that one still available. Uh, the In Color Retirement class is coming up the 27th and 29th of April. This one is also free with a minimum order or you can pay for the kits. They all feature the ink colors that are retiring. Same stamp set, you guys. If you don't get the in symmetry, it's gone already. It like retired right after I published the class. So sad face, but you can use something else, um, any other floral arrangement and any other sentiment on here. So that is uh, the end of April. And that, um, the rest of the stuff is May, but you guys, I'm going to show you these really quick. I'm excited. So completely worked with Carissa on these cards uh, for the ink, paper, scissors for May, you guys, just to show you some beautiful cards that are coming up for ink, paper, scissors in May. This one, you guys, I haven't even shown these yet. So I cased um, Carissa's cards. She said, go for it because she made, this is one of her favorite suites. You guys, this is one of those lantern cards where you put a tea light in the middle of this. And so honestly, all you need for this is something right here, a sentiment and a focal image to help accent it. And otherwise your kit will have everything in it to make it exactly like mine here. So um, thank you to Carissa for her inspiration on all of these cards. Um, this one is like mystery night from a couple months ago. And then this one is a pocket card. So you guys, this is ink, paper, scissors for May. Okay. So I am completely open on that one. So Elaine, I knew you were going to say that because you just bought this bundle. It's almost in. It's not, it hasn't arrived yet, but I knew you would want to do ink, paper, scissors because you just got that bundle. So you guys, this is what's coming up for a lot of, um, look at all this. This is all April and May class cards. Just so much stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So if anybody wants to sign up for ink, paper, scissors in May, please reach out to me. Um, Anyway, I like however, and just sign up. Let me know. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you guys last night, if you saw a game night last night, we had that little linen butterfly. And the little linen butterfly, um, I talked about the linen paper briefly. And so I'm going to flip down. I brought this down to show you. So it's called linen specialty paper. It's a 12 by 12. And um, what it's a sticker. So this, this linen, it comes on a 12 by 12 sheet. It's very flimsy and floppy. And what you do is you peel this back. And so there's a sticker and then that peels and it's really flimsy. So you can't really die cut with it. So I'm sorry, Zaina, I know you're sad. You can't do these <laughs> classes. Um, so the linen paper then what we did is we put it on basic white cardstock, And from there, that's how the butterfly got cut out. So that linen thread is in the annual catalog carrying over to next catalog. So if you haven't gotten some sheets, you could think about getting some. Um, it's like six bucks, I think, for the two sheets. So it's not so crazy. Hi, Julie Beerspock. So 
Um, yeah, so I wanted to share that with you. So, um, yeah, uh, don't know much else. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're rolling into now the monthly class, and let's just stamp for next week. And um, just so you know, as soon as you guys know you're interested in taking a class, um, let me know. And once you place your order, too, it really helps me if you could follow up. I mean, I generally try to say, hey, what class were you thinking? But if you already have an idea of what class you want to sign up for, it really helps me because then I can get those card kits out in the mail to you. So, yeah, the ink, paper, scissors for April and May are phenomenal. Lovely. <laughs> As what's his face would say, Aus, not awesome powers. Lovely. <laughs> Whoever says that, I don't know. Lovely. Um, okay. I know. It's so, Sue, it's so crazy. You can't wait for May and we just started April. <laughs> so it's so crazy how fast like this time is flying. You guys, I've been um, not working at that full-time job now for two months. I took my leave of absence February 7th. It is April 8th and I only worked one day. So um, yes. So yeah, Zaina. So I don't mail to outside of the country though. <laughs> So I have gotten, somebody just recently asked if I would mail card kits to Greece. And I'm like, I don't ship internationally. So um, I don't want, the, not that it's a headache, but I don't want the stress of shipping internationally at this point. I'm trying to manage everything that I can, keeping everybody happy in the United States that I work with and not forgetting things. And so to add on that would be one more complexity, especially with the shipping. I couldn't even promise you that your card kits would get there. I don't know how long it would take. So I know you know, but it's so sad. <laughs> I wish I could make everybody happy. So, all right, you guys, I heard Tyler open up the garage door and back his truck in. And I know he's looking on his phone at stuff right now, waiting for me to get finish. So I had said that I was going to do something in the Cards by Christine VIP page. I'm not sure if I will do that. If I do, it'll be a surprise. If I don't, don't, um, don't look for it. Um, I have... I did have a plan of what I wanted to do, and I'm still going to try to make it happen before 10 o'clock tomorrow morning because I have all the card buffet cards, well, five of them, and I saved out a set to put together for my VIPs as a little special treat for them, and I didn't have a moment to sit down and do it. I worked on other stuff all day, <laughs> so let's we'll see if I can pull it out of the area. So we'll make, we'll make something happen. So, all right, you guys, I'm going to sign off. Lots of sunshine and love and hugs to you. Enjoy the rest of your Friday night and um, enjoy your weekend on um, whatever you may do. Um, enjoy some time for you, okay? Um, don't think about all the crazy that's happening in the world. Find a little some um, time for yourself and yeah, make do something to make you happy this weekend. That's all I want you to do. So, all right, you guys. Lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you. And we will see you the next time. Bye, guys.